great to chat to you. Initially, I wanted to ask around Dominic Solanke. There's reports of him um, in the last stages of talks with Spurs to move over there. How is that coming along and is there any progress with that? Yes, uh, I expected this question yeah, to be the first one. Yeah, I, I know that uh, talks are ongoing. It's different from the situation you asked me probably past week. But uh, right now it's our players, is uh, what I know. Uh, I cannot tell you uh, much more. Obviously, uh, for us, you know that Dom is a very, very important player. Is 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 basic in our in our system. But uh, I cannot uh, tell you how this is going to is going to finish. Lovely. I get you, did, you said you mentioned how of an important player is to you. Because hypothetically speaking, if he did, was to go, how much of a miss would he be to the club just the, from the pure influence he's had in terms of goal scoring assists throughout the season? Yeah, probably everyone focuses in the goals. He scores. I think he scores a big percentage of our of our goals, but uh, he gives us much more than, than than goals. I think he is very complete. I've said it a lot of times. He helps us in all the phases of the game, uh, and uh, it would be a big miss. Obviously, it's obvious. No, he's someone that uh, has been very involved. He played all the games past season. He scored a lot of goals. But if this happens, I think the 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 club has uh, it has happened in other positions. You know, uh, uh, we have to trust the people inside the club and I'm sure they will they will be ready but I I repeat it again right now today in this moment of the of the day don't continue with with us of course football is obviously forever moving fast um, we are only one week away from the start of the season how difficult if it is difficult would it be I guess trying to navigate the potential of bringing in a new striker at such a late point of the season when you know we've had a pre-season that you've done very well and only one more game remaining of that season and you're going away for your opening game of the season. Yeah, I, I've talked about this before. I hate this part of the season. I hate uh, when we have competition and the window is open. I hate also January. That happens more or less the same. I think he, August is even worse because normally in January clubs change one, two players, more or less the core players don't move a lot. In the summer it's worse because uh, we are going to play three league games, one cup game before the market closes. Very important games for us. And uh, I had experience from past season where the day before playing a game, uh, you are in a hotel with players that probably they are going somewhere else in, in two hours. You cannot make big plans. And it's very difficult for the coaches, but they don't change it. Uh, we always complain, the coaches always complain every year, every coach. I speak to uh, says the same, but if they don't change the rules, it's because I don't know why, but uh, uh, they prefer it to be like this. I don't know if it's because of the all, all the media that gets around this, or, but for me, uh, the most logical thing would be once the season starts, this is it's, it's over, but it is not like this, and we have to have these three, four weeks with a lot of uh, movements, speculation, and uh, we have to adapt. At the end, uh, you only have the chance to to adapt, and that's what we are, are going to try to do, yeah. It's part of that adaption process, just trying to get signings done before the season starts now, and obviously there's 21 days left until the start, end of the window, nobody wants to be doing business on that last day. Yes, of course, uh, it's, uh, especially for the coaches. No? You want the players as soon as possible, so they can do all the precision, they can uh, integrate very well, they can uh, uh, learn how we want to play, they can know better the teammates, but normally this doesn't happen. This happens with one player, two players, but normally uh, the market moves quite uh, at the end, no. First they go the big, big uh, teams with the big money, and then the others go a little bit later, no. And uh, right now we have to adapt. We have one advantage comparing from past season that uh, we know each other very well. I we have a group of players that I think uh, they they realize what we want to do and how we want to do it, and uh, I'm sure we will. Uh, be be competitive, no? This 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 games also. And um, just last for me, one last question on Dominic Solanke. Um, with reports of his um, potential release clause being anything between sixty to fifty-five million, 
if it was to hypothetically happen, what would those funds, I guess, do for you and the club and being able to, now that you've done a complete full season and you've taken the Cherries to new heights, be able to utilise that and really and get it going for the rest of the season? I really don't know. I'm not in the table. I don't know if, uh, how it's going to what's going to happen. No, I, obviously I don't ask about uh, money. I don't ask about these things. I want to know uh, what's uh, the end product. If uh, Dom is going to continue, is not going to continue. Uh, for sure, I know that not only in the number nine club is ready for whatever happens in any position. Uh, but once the market is open. You, all the negotiations have different uh, kinds of difficulties, and you never know how it's going to how it's going to finish. Uh, my job is to be the coach, you know. Uh, obviously, uh, Dom is a very very important player, but uh, we also have uh, also very very good players, and, uh, and I'm, I trust the club, and I I, I will be behind uh, behind them, uh, whatever it happens. Yes, obviously.